What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? For those of you live on the Facebook feed in the Smart Academy group, uh, what is happening? I see you guys coming in. I see you guys are still piling in here on the live go to webinar. Some of you guys are picking and choosing where you guys are going to see me and listen to me and get trained. So, um, welcome everybody. This is our Wednesday call as normal. I'm back in my office. I'm no longer traveling. Uh, it was a long, fun, enjoyable time. I was on the road for uh, quite a while. So uh, we had two incredible masterminds um, that uh, myself and Sean and Kent all ran. Uh, so again, if you're interested in the masterminds, we encourage you to email support regarding uh, the masterminds, uh, but they are awesome. For Facebook feed, guys, it looks like our connection is weak. Don't know how long. Don't know how long it'll work, but it seems to be working. So, uh, welcome for everybody here on the Facebook feed. Welcome everybody to uh, that is live here. Go to webinar. Um, I am going to jump into, and I've been getting a lot of questions since our mastermind about our processes uh, regarding, you know, lead flow and how it gets handled and what to do and how to do it. And so, um, I want to go into that and dive into that, and maybe. For all you Facebook guys, let me see if this makes a little bit more sense. Maybe, I think I got it. Woo, man. All right, so hopefully uh, everyone sees me, hears me. You guys get to see the mic. What's up? That's what I do the podcast in. That's what you get to hear me from. So it's real professional. So again, uh, welcome everybody. I see you guys are still piling on. Um, I will say that this has been the number one topic since our masterminds has been lead flow and how we handle leads in our business. So I'm going to jump into um, starting from the point of you guys send your marketing out, okay, and the phone is ringing, okay. So I'm going to skip by the, you know, what list and things of that nature. I'm already assuming all that went out. You have your Ring Central or, or Call Rail or Ring uh, Call Rail up. You have your Podio account up. I'm, I'm assuming all that's taken care of. Now what I want to talk to you about is when the phone rings, how does it get handled by us um, and how does that translate to you? I obviously, after doing this for eight years now, we're possibly at a different position than you guys are. Some of you guys are rocking and rolling. Some of you guys are just getting started. And so I'm going to make sure it's relevant to the solopreneurs who are just getting started as well as the people who possibly have maybe some employees or some virtual assistants. Uh, that they can leverage their time okay so that being said I'm gonna jump into the call coming in we actually have a service called map communications map MAP communications um, and they answer the phone live 24 hours a day there are also uh, companies out there other companies out there uh, one tends to be a little bit more well-known called Pat live what's going on on Facebook group um, and so what their whole job is 24 hours a day they're located in Dallas Texas and they answer the phone live saying hello thank you for calling Phoenix Wealth Builders that is a key component of what we want to do because we are in a very competitive market like Phoenix a lot of you guys might feel the same way about your market it is happening across the board markets are becoming much more competitive so we need to separate ourselves as investors and so what I encourage you guys to do is to answer the phone live. For those that are solopreneurs, do your very best to answer every single call live. If you can't manage that, some of you guys might be working, um, some of you might have other responsibilities, make sure that you have a voicemail set up so that the second you have a moment, you can call them back, right? This is all about speed here. Right, it's about speed and building rapport. So, for those of you who uh, are working in our solopreneurs and are unable to answer, you know, answer the phone live, uh, make sure your voicemail is set up and you call them back immediately. For those that might have a little bit of a budget that they can play with, I encourage you to have a company like Map Communications, like Pat Live, handle answering the call live for you, and then handing it off to you they hand it off to you by email so it's very easy to handle um, 
I encourage that because that extra step of answering that phone live really goes a long way. And you can simply give that company a script, something simple. I'll give you the five questions that uh, Map Communications asks on our behalf. The first is, what is your name? What is the address of the property? What is your phone number? What is your email? And why are you looking to sell? Why are you calling? That is it. That's all I'm asking them to ask. I don't want any judgments on the value of the home or whether it's a deal or not a deal. I don't want them to handle any of it. So then they email me the five answers, right? Name, address, phone number, email, and uh, why they're looking to sell. So now I have that. Now, for those of you that are solopreneurs, you get to call them back as soon as possible as soon as you can, on your lunch breaks, on your coffee breaks, um, whenever you have a moment, the key here is speed, right? So that is gonna be paramount. How we have it in our office, that company emails us, it goes to our lead manager, Eliana. Eliana then will call them immediately. Her job is immediate. She is sitting in the office right next to mine and she calls them immediately and goes through a script. In fact, I told her I was gonna be reviewing this so I have her actual script. Look at all the writing and all that stuff. That's fun, um, right? And so I am going to read the actual script that uh, she goes through, okay, word for word. Uh, so I'm going to read exactly what she does. This is what you should be saying. Because regardless of whether you answer the phone live, regardless of whether it goes to voicemail and you're calling them back, or if you have a answering service such as Map Communications, um, you do not want to have any judgment on whether this is a deal until you go meet with the seller face to face, face to face. Now I understand for some of you, uh, you are virtually wholesaling or you might be getting leads from absentee homeowners. Um, and I completely understand that and you need to attack that in a slightly different positioning, but for the majority of you, I'm talking to the majority that are doing deals in their area, um, that the homeowner lives in the area or possibly even lives in the house, uh, you know, this is how I want you to attack that. So the script goes like this. I'm going to read it, right? Hi, my name is Justin uh, from Phoenix Wealth Builders. I received your voicemail regarding the house on 123 Main Street. Did I catch you at a good time? If not, ask a schedule a convenient time for the seller. Um, but I really want to, if they say it's not a good time, I say, okay, let me just ask you a couple quick questions, right? And then I'll fast forward all the way into, I'll skip building report. I'll fast forward all the way into, um, you know, hey, listen, I, I'm very interested in buying your house. Obviously, I want to see the home and meet you and shake your hand and, and we can go from there. What's the best time to meet you at your home, right? That's if they don't have much time. I'm not going to let them off the hook. I'm going to want to still say, okay, hey, listen, I want your home. I'm interested in your home. Let's find a time to go meet, right? That's the concept behind all of this is you need to go meet with them. So did I catch you at a good time? Yes. Great. How are you today? Build rapport, right? I have a few questions for you. Let's start with, are you the owner or decision maker, right? Because several of you, obviously, if you've done this long enough, will realize sometimes you're talking to someone that doesn't even have the authority to sell the property, right? So you want to uh, qualify them. Um, perfect. They say yes. Perfect. What is the square footage of the home? How many beds, baths, um, general condition of the home? What is the AC? When is the AC last repaired? What is the age of the roof? Um, when, when is the last time you've had any plumbing or electrical issues? The basics about the home, right? You can get that from our seller script in the software, right? Or in the coaching, we have a seller script and it goes through the basics of the home and, and you know, questions you want to ask. So she just basically wrote up her own Word doc. This is not in the coaching. She took our seller script and put it into words, okay? Um, so she asked those questions. Does it have a pool? How does the pool? When was it last replaced? They answer it. They answer all the questions, which is great. Then she says, okay, great. So why are you looking to sell? This is where I want her to build rapport, show empathy, right? How soon are you looking to sell your property? Do you own the home or have a mortgage? If there is a mortgage, what is the balance owed? 
So what I want to qualify here is just, is this upside down or not? That's all I'm trying to qualify. I'm not trying to find the motivation and try to judge whether this is something that um, is going to be a deal or not. I'm simply just qualifying, is this going to be a short sale or not? If it's a short sale, we tend to not want to deal with those. We tend to, you know, want to at least try to buy it outright and fix and flip it, but on the wholesale world, we don't mess with short sales wholesaling, right? We will buy them and, and fix and flip them. But for those of you that are strictly doing wholesale, which is the majority of you, I tend to, if it is going to be a short sale, I would refer them a realtor and move on, okay? So now they say, um, yes, I own the home. There's a very small mortgage. I've owned it for 50 years. I've paid down the balance. Okay, great. So listen, now going back to the script. I appreciate you answering all my questions. Now let me tell you a little bit about us and what we do. We look for properties that fit a very specific criteria that we can renovate and resell for a profit, or if it makes sense, we purchase and hold as rentals. What you will benefit from selling to us is we pay cash and buy properties in as-is condition. Therefore, we will not ask you to spend any unnecessary money fixing your property. In addition, we close on your time frame, meaning you will have a guaranteed price and guaranteed closing date. You will also have savings of thousands of dollars by not paying any commissions, not paying any rehab costs, and or any closing costs. Most commissions are 6% or higher, and closing costs can be upwards of 3% or higher on top of the cost to repair your home. I'd like to give you a solid offer and check out your property. Is there any way we can set up a time to do that? That's it, boom, right there. We didn't discuss what they thought their home was worth. We didn't discuss what I thought their home was worth. All Eliana did was that she asked the questions about the home, the square footage, does it have a pool or not, when was the last time the roofers were placed, um, you name it. But she was just finding out about the home. The other thing she did was let them know who we are and what we do. At that point, we said, we'd really love to give you an offer. When is the time that we can come and meet you and take a look at the home? Boom. And I want that to be done today, right? I want that to be done yesterday, right? I want it to be literally we have two acquisitions right now that she had a call or an appointment from a call right now onto their calendar that they could go see. It's 1218 right now. They could go see it at 1230 or, or 1 o'clock, let's call it, right? That's how quickly we want our business to move. Now for again, those people who do not have a team, they don't have an office, this is where it changes slightly. You have to look at what are your revenue generating activities and what's gonna be most beneficial for you. Um, again, for those who look at me, I'm just simply looking at the Facebook group because they've had to see my undercarriage, right? Uh, so thanks for sticking in there. You know, so again, if you're a solopreneur, what you're really looking to do is Find that time where you can answer the phone live, set an appointment, go on the appointment without missing too many calls, okay? But the idea here is go on every single appointment you can. Do not have any judgment in value of house or motivation based off a of phone. Don't talk numbers to the best of your ability. Just go meet them. If at that point they say, we just wanted to know how much you thought our home was worth, fine. Give them the answer and then it turns into a follow-up situation, which will be another call but for the time being, it turns into a follow-up situation. Now, once you are at the home, if you're a solopreneur, you're personally at the home, right? So you had to set a time for yourself. You probably had to set an appointment. For those that might have a team member or whatnot, you wanna make it immediate, okay? Um, now that's where your negotiation starts to go in. This is where you're building rapport. This is where you're walking the home, looking at the home, um, you know, asking them questions about the home. This is where you want to find out, you know, what work they've done to the home, um, where their grandchildren were raised, and, you know, those stories to build rapport. Now, when it gets time for that negotiation, I want you to sit down at the table. You must sit down at the table. Um, and the reason being is, I'm blanking on the percentage, but it's a large percentage of deals that actually get done are when people are calm and sitting not walking around a home, talking about emotional things. That is not when it gets done. It is when they're sitting in place, calm and able to listen and review, okay? I forgot the percentage, it's some large percentage. Um, and again, as I am coaching you guys, remember I'm always coming from a perspective of 
marketing and sales. You are in sales. If you need good sales books or training on persuasion and negotiation, there are many of them out there. Brian Tracy is a huge name. Zig Ziglar is a huge name. Um, Grant Cardone is a huge name. So there are many of those people that you can get books or training programs from. I have done many of them. So a lot of my expertise comes from my training that I've done, just like anything else. So I encourage you to pick up those books, those training programs, watch them, because now as you are sitting is when you need to be good at your negotiating skills, right? At the tactics it's going to take to um, persuade, to negotiate, to communicate, right? So with all that being said, sit them down and start discussing the four major components. One is you, right? They need to like you. Two is price. Three is the process. And four is the paperwork. I talk about this over and over and over again in our trainings. They will, if they like you, and make sure they do, that's why you build rapport, that's why you spend time circling the house, right? If they like you, um, you have a much better chance. Now, if you give them a good number, you have a much better chance. If they understand the entire process of selling their home, you will have a good chance. And then, on top of it all, if they understand the paperwork, you got the deal, right? You fulfill those four, you fulfill their issues that they might have, you will have the deal. When you sit them down, there's one question I want you to ask. One question. So funny watching two cameras, right? Um, there's one question I want you to ask, and that is, what is the most important part to you about selling your home? And be quiet. Because very often it's not just the money or the price. Often it can be other components. Well, we inherited this home. I have two brothers and two sisters, and we're always arguing. Maybe they need help moving. Maybe they need cash to get a rental property or a U-Haul moving. You know, there's other components in life that it's not always just the money. Now, does money come into play? Yes. But too often, as real estate investors, we only focus on the money, and we forget all the other issues that might be leading up to these people making the decision and selling it to you. So that is the one question. Again. What is the most important part to you about selling your home? Silence, dead silence, radio silence. Do not speak up. Let them answer that. And the number one rule in sales is to always agree. So if they say, um, my siblings and I are fighting over the home, we just need it sold. I'm getting a divorce, we just need it sold. I need to help moving. I don't know where I'm going to live. Whatever their answers are, agree. Say, I completely understand. I agree. That is an important part about selling the home. Right? That way they feel empathy for what they're going through, and now you can help give them a solution, resolve what they're going through. That is the most important part of your negotiating skills, um, and the most important part of sales in general is solve all of their solutions, and you will get the deal, period. Right. So with that being said, this is where you do that. You solve their issues. You make sure that they like you. They make you make sure that they uh, understand the paperwork. You make sure they understand the process, and you make sure that the price is fair for both sides. Um, Ava, what's up? Can you say that again? What is the question to ask them? The question is, what is the most important part to you about selling your home? Right. Because a lot of times it's not just the money. What is the most important part of, to you about selling your home? Rephrase it, right? What is the most important part about selling your home to you, right? What is what is your most um, important issue when selling your home? However you say that, that is the one question you ask, and you are silent. Okay. At that point, you're on and going. Right. So um, now the remaining of all that, you know, is in your um, patience with describing the paperwork and what is going to happen. What is the process? You have to have patience. You have to review it. Obviously, giving them the price that works for both sides, and you got to be likable. You have to be a chameleon, you know. And, and once you can solve those four things and ultimately solve their entire uh, issue. Um, all of their issues, you're going to get the deal. You're going to get the deal. 
All right, I'm going to answer some questions. Eugene, what's going on? Andrew, what's up? Robert, what's up? Robert, listen, it's 73 degrees in Anaheim. It's 113 here. It's 113 degrees. It's hot. Whoa, Kelly, I don't have a tan. It's just who I am. It's the lighting. It's, it makes me look good. There's no tan here. I didn't get a tan down in San Diego. Jeff, what's going on, big man? Great question to ask. Some people just see another property as a burden rather it all being the money. Exactly. It's not. Rosa, what's up? Um, it's not always just the money, and that's a key component, right? Um, and again, as I, as I will start to really grind on you guys about honing in your negotiating skills, your sales skills, your communication skills, it's just so important that you have to understand it's not always the money, right? If you were selling a product, uh, which you're selling yourself, you are the product, you know, you need to find out, you know, if it is just the price, if it is that they just have never sold a home before and they have no idea what is to happen, if um, the paperwork is confusing, right, you need to understand if they're going through something that you can help resolve. If you don't ask those questions, it's called question-based selling. If you don't ask those questions, you're never ultimately going to give them the solutions to their issues and ultimately someone like me is going to come behind you and get the deal because I will do that. I will take our time to do that. Fair enough? All right. Mark, what's going on? You're very welcome, dude. Andrew, will you be chatting about follow-up process to get that first phone contact? Andrew, that is actually next week's call. Uh, but I will go very fast through this. Andrew and I spent some good time in the mastermind together. But I will say this. If you do not get back with them on the first day, for you solopreneurs who are out there and it's just you, uh, they call in, they leave a voicemail, and you call back. Call them and leave a voicemail every time. Call them twice on the first day. Call them once every other day after that and leave a voicemail every single time. By your fifth day, I would encourage you if you have their email, I would encourage there to be another form of communication by the fifth day. I also will call every day and leave a voicemail, right? They called you. They left a message. They are interested. By the tenth day, if you have not talked to them, I send an offer. By the tenth day, send an offer. And from there, obviously, it'll go. So, Andrew, that's the first 10 days. Um, but you have to be relentless on that follow-up. What are some of the negotiation books you mentioned? Uh, Jeff, have some somewhere? Here's one. Oh. Here's one. It's uh, The Closer's Survival Guide by Grant Cardone. The Closer Survival Guide by Grant Cardone is a great one. He actually makes it in like a workbook format. We can actually, you know, he gives you the clothes and then you can actually make it pertain to, uh, you can write your own clothes out, right, throughout the book. Um, so he makes that very good. Um, Brian Tracy has plenty of great books. Um, Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone is one I just read twice recently. That is a great book. Um, uh, what else? Uh, Spin Selling is a great book. Uh, the Little Red Book of Selling is a great book. There are so many out there. Google Top 10 Sales Books. Buy them all. <laughs> Buy them all. Um, but again, some of the notable names in the industry that do, you know, have been around for a long time that are trustworthy. Grant Cardone, um, Brian Tracy is another one. Um, Zig Ziglar, obviously, most people have, are aware of who Zig Ziglar is. So those are some three names that I would say most all books that you get from those three guys, you're going to really learn a lot from. All right. Andrew. All right, all right, all right. All right, guys, that is what we got for today. I am going to be checking out and see you on next week's training call. Glad to have you. Uh, thanks, Jeff, and everyone who is here, Facebook Live in the Smart Academy group. And that being said, I'm checking out. Peace.